Today, we're talking about menstrual cycles and the vaccine. Some of you report that you are having irregular periods after getting a COVID vaccine. Um, and you're telling me this is your reality, but you're visiting medical practitioners who are basically denying your experience. So I'm going to an expert who is going to speak to what might be going on and some of the inquiry uh, that were that is ahead. First, I just want to be very clear about this. I am vaccinated. The data shows that once vaccinated, you are super, super unlikely to be hospitalized or die from COVID. I urge anybody who can get the vaccine to get the vaccine. Also, this is not about fertility. I'll get into that with a doctor coming up. What we wanna do here is understand what might be going on with our bodies. And we wanna to talk to doctors who hear us and believe our experience. So with that said, I am welcoming in Dr. Jennifer, Jen Gunter. Um, she's an OBGYN and pain medicine physician, author of the newsletter, The Vagenda, and also best-selling author of The Vagina Bible and The Menopause Manifest. Is that, did I get it all right, Dr. Gunter? It's the Menopause Manifesto, Manifesto. but yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. First of all, I want to be very clear that anecdote isn't data, but there are an awful lot of anecdotes from women who say that their periods have become in one way or another irregular after getting the vaccine. I'm curious what you're hearing and if you think there's enough signal here for there to be something meaningful. Well, I think it's always really important when we take reports in, one, to take them in, but two, to also reflect and, and, and understand that you know we're only getting a percentage of experiences. So for example, all the people getting vaccinated and not having a negative outcome aren't, you know, aren't posting about that online. So it's kind of what we would say in medicine to be a little bit of um, you know, a biased data set, right? That the data set doesn't reflect the experience of everybody. It just reflects the experience of people who are reporting. But that being said, it's still very important to look into and, and to get information so we can inform our patients. And so, you know, the, the problem is that actually menstrual irregularity in vaccines has not been studied or been well studied. And there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, obviously the big one is misogyny. And, and if the, all the people in the room um, don't have menstrual periods, then, then that might not be something they think about, right? But, you know, there, the other thing that I would always like to sort of... Um, you know, make people feel more reassured is that is that significant events that affect menstruation would be picked up by previous vaccine studies. So people going to the emergency department with heavy bleeding, for example, people needing hysterectomies for heavy bleeding. So, ter so significant problems related to menstruation would have been picked up by those studies. However, you know, subtle changes or my cycle came early or my cycle is heavier, those wouldn't have been picked up. I just want to uh, underscore something you're saying is it's not just that it wasn't studied for this vaccine. It hasn't been studied for vaccines broadly in general. Yeah, so when people started with these reports, I started digging through other vaccines and I thought, oh, there must be, you know, there maybe there's something I can compare it to. And honestly, you know, this is such, this was all done so quickly, you know, you could say, oh, well, you know, this is such a, a you know, people were really scrambling to get the data out. Maybe they didn't report it. Maybe they have it and they didn't report it. So, you know, I did email both vaccine manufacturers at the time when I wrote, there was only two approved. And unfortunately, I didn't hear, hear back, but, you know, I'm sure they're like inundated with requests. So I actually went and looked at the HPV vaccine because I thought if any vaccine was the most studied, it would be that. And it wasn't included in the study data. Now, they did do a follow-up study where they looked back um, at, uh, at women who'd been vaccinated to see what their experiences were. Um, but that's a retrospective data and, and not really that, um, that reliable. So unfortunately, the data wasn't captured. That's crazy. Uh, I understand there's a study underway now regarding uh, menstrual cycles and the, this vaccine. Well. Yes, but it's not going to answer anybody's question. So what that study is, is getting, is asking people to report what's happened to their menstrual cycle 
and if they've had menstrual cycle irregularities. But, but to get a real accurate study, you have to survey everybody who's vaccinated, not just people who are, oh my gosh, I've had a bleeding problem, I'm gonna go sign up for this study, right? So it's again, it's gonna give you a biased data set. Now, it you know may give us an idea of numbers. So if 10,000 women fill out that survey versus 500, well, that might tell us that, oh, we really need to look into this a little bit more to see what's going on. Um, but it's not gonna answer anybody's question on that specific study. Um, what we really need is we need studies where people have had their, and this is part of the problem is, if you don't have two or three cycles of your menstrual cycle recorded before the study, we can't actually then tell if your cycle's truly irregular, right? So most studies aren't looking at people two months before enrollment. I see, this is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I provide a link to whatever this audience can sign up for if there is a public study. Um, let's get to some specifics because what I hear anecdotally is both that some women are missing their period, some say for two months after the vaccine, some say it's just skipping a couple weeks, I've also heard about excessive bleeding and even breakthrough bleeding for menopausal women or women who've transitioned. Um, what do you hear most often? Well, I kind of hear across the spectrum. So what I would say is anybody who's having bleeding after menopause should not ever, ever, ever pin that on the vaccine. You need to go to your doctor. You need to be tested for endometrial cancer. That's cancer of the lining of the uterus. Um, in your first year after your last menstrual period, actually bleeding is very common. So, you know, and, and it needs to be investigated. When you're several years out from menopause, it's less common, but, but there are, you know, there can also be coincidence, right? You can get a vaccine and you could have a precancer of the lining of the uterus. And so it's super important that if you are um, close to menopause, if you are after menopause, meaning a year from your final period, you do not at all think this is vaccine related and you go to your doctor and you get tested. Um, and so, yeah, people have been reporting the gamut. So I think that it's really important, first of all, to um, explain that there could be several potential mechanisms that are at play. None of them are particularly concerning. Now, it may be medically inconvenient and medically worrying, right, to have this happen to you, but worrying and being worrisome are different things. And so I think it's important to clarify those two. So let's talk about what could be causing this. I've read all manner of theories, um, but you actually have some insight. So if, if there are in fact true irregularities, what might this, how would you explain the science behind that? Well, so I just want to also, you know, couch it with, we don't know what percentage of people. So this is a hypothesis, right? And so this is the kind of hypothesis you'd use when you are starting a study. You'd say, what could be the potential mechanisms that a vaccine could cause menstrual irregularity? And so you wanna make sure that your study then could capture all of those. So one is, it could be a, you know, a spurious effect, as I mentioned, that only the people reporting problems and they're, and, Irregular bleeding and heavy bleeding, these things are actually very common. So we could be capturing just a biased data set. Another possibility is it could be stress related. So stress has a huge impact on the menstrual cycle. Some people, if they fly international, their cycles messed up. Some people studying for an exam, their cycles messed up. Everybody is very different. And we are living in a very stressful time. And many people are, were so relieved to get the vaccine. Many people had to jump through all kinds of hoops to get the vaccine. Remember when it first came out, no one knew how to sign up. It was a pan, like it was this mad panic for about six weeks. So that is a definite possibility is that it was an impact of stress on the hormones from the brain that trigger, um, trigger your menstrual cycle. So, and that doesn't mean it's a fake effect. That's a real clinical effect. It's a possibility that um, the vaccine could be having some type of effect on the lining of the uterus. And this mechanism would be because the lining of the uterus is part of your immune system. Okay, so just like when you get vaccinated, you might get a swollen lymph node or you might get a fever and that's part of your immune system saying, hey, the vaccine's here, we ought to wake up, we got to do our things. The lining of your uterus is just 
like that. It's part of the immune system. The immune system is intimately involved with pregnancy, with menstruation. You have to remember, you shed the lining of your uterus every month, and then it has to repair and rebuild. This is wound healing. It's also protecting you against the outside environment. Infections can get up into your uterus. Your uterus is essentially connected to the outside world through your cervix. So you need to have a very vigilant immune system. And there's something in the lining of the uterus called toll-like receptors. And mRNA are very, um, very big triggers of that. So, you know, your, your uterus is got all kinds of early warning systems for different kinds of viruses and bacteria. So it can, you know, get in sort of, you know, respond when it needs to. So it is possible that, um, you know, that the vaccine has triggered the immune system in the lining of the uterus. And that would be a temporary effect and not anything to worry about. So again, worrying, because you're like, oh my gosh, why am I bleeding all over the place? But it's not worrisome. Just like your fever goes away after your vaccine, just like your swollen lymph nodes goes away, this is going to reset itself. And we have data, I just want to add, we have data to show that there's no impact on fertility. So this is not a concerning sign. Or con would, if this is a true hypothesis, it's not a concerning one. This is so helpful. So would you elaborate on the data that says this wouldn't impact fertility? Yeah, so we have, you know, we have um, the, you know, the data set that was collected so far from the CDC, looking at people who've been vaccinated during pregnancy and showing no negative outcomes. We also have some data from, um, from uh, fertility experts. So, so uh, one group actually looked at implantation rate of embryos with IVF for people who were vaccinated versus those who weren't, right? So that's, you know, so if you were hypothesizing that there was a problem with the lining of the uterus, it would be with implantation that you would see the issue. And there was no different in implantation with embryos from people who were vaccinated versus those who weren't. Um, and I think it's a really important thing to add that if the vaccine does have this temporary immune impact on the lining of the uterus, which is not medically problematic, the coronavirus is going to have a much greater effect because it's also obviously has the mRNA. Okay, let's touch on what the coronavirus actually does and how it impacts menstruation in a minute and fertility. I wanna go back to um, the studies that show uh, implementation is successful. What you're saying is women who are vaccinated are successfully carrying a pregnancy one of the um some of the disinformation out there basically says that we wouldn't know that it's too soon to know those people are lying i think that's a really important thing that um that this sort of whole lie about the vaccine and infertility comes from a couple of people who have malignant intentions i think it's really important to call out evil people for being evil um to you know this a lot of it started with this sort of you know lie that the um that the antibodies to the spike protein are similar, uh, you know, would somehow attack um, a protein in the placenta called syncytin one, but that's just not medically possible. You would have to be medically illiterate to think that was happening. So why, why some doctors would say that, I, I don't know. You'll have to ask them why they're willfully ignorant. Um, one of the big spreaders of this misinformation has been Dr. Christiane Northrup, who is a QAnon believer. So there's that. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's, uh, that's simply just made up to scare people and many people who are, are sort of, you know, sowing these lies, you know, they really benefit financially from it. And isn't it the case that these clinical trials started some of them more than a year ago, we would know some women probably have carried their pregnancies to term post vaccine. Look, I mean, I think something like 100 million people around the world have been vaccinated. If there were problems, we would know. This isn't, you know, this isn't something that's only been given to five women or 10 women. You know, this has been given to tons of people. If there was a dramatic rise in miscarriages, we would know. My colleagues would be saying, hey, have you seen this? I mean, we would know. I, I live in a city where the very high vaccination rate, like, we're not seeing any problems, like we're just not. Um, so, you know, and I would say anecdotally, I have not had an increase in calls to my office about bleeding after vaccination. I maybe have had like one or two, like that's like very little. So I think that's why it's super important that we gather data so we can inform people. It's certainly possible that, you know, that it's something that is affecting, you know, say if we would say, for example, say, 
5% of people normally have an irregular period in a given month. Well, maybe perhaps after the vaccine, it's 10%. That's still a significant amount. Doesn't mean it's happening though to everybody. And so we need data to inform people about the risks if that's so they can, they can be warned. I mean, imagine if you got vaccinated and you got a fever and no one told you that could happen, you'd be super scared, right? Right. And that's why it's just important to have these conversations and gather the information to have a big picture of what's going on. A uh, question you've said a couple of times that this is if there is an impact on menstruation, it would be short lived. How do we know that? And just based on my basic knowledge, people will think, well, that would impact fertility. Yeah, no. So, you know, first of all, the lining of your uterus is built to turn over any, every 28 days. So, you know, you're, so any inflammation is not going to be there persistently. But again, as we've seen, no, no impact on implantation. This is, this is what the lining of the uterus is built to do. It, it's built to handle this. this. It's doing its job right? You know, it's, it's like saying, you know, oh my gosh, if you're itchy in response to a mosquito bite, that there's something wrong. No, like that's your body doing its job. So I would, I would actually caution people or, or ask people to think about it more like, just like the swollen lymph node is your body doing its job, what it's designed to do. A swollen lymph node is not harmful. It's not permanent after a vaccine. It's going to go away. It's just a sign of an immune response. The lining of your uterus is built to respond to all the things in the environment. This is what it does. And is there one of the reasons it, there could be differential effects? Could it relate to when in your cycle you get the shot? I mean, that's a possibility. I think it's just, it's, you know, we're talking about so many hypotheticals. It's really hard to know. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, someone, yeah. I mean, so I, I just use sort of hypothesizing on top of hypothesizing. So yeah, it's a possibility. Um, you know, there's also been a study, an IVF study that actually looked at a small group, but still important data that looked at uh, women getting IVF. And when we do IVF and we drain out the egg, we drain out the fluid around the egg and that has all the hormones. And so what they did was they measured the hormone production uh, from people who had um, been vaccinated versus those who had for those, those who had antibodies from COVID from natural infection. And they found that there was no difference. So um, I think that's also an important thing. Obviously, these people received hormones and their cycles were stimulated. So it's not the same as just a regular menstrual cycle. But, you know, we're just having more and more data that, that shows that that's just, you know, not, there, there doesn't seem to be a concern at all. Would you speak to the impact of getting COVID? on pregnancy? And would you advise that women who are thinking about getting pregnant get vaccinated? I would urge every single person to get vaccinated. And if you get pregnant and you get COVID, you are more likely to die than someone who doesn't get COVID. Um, you are more like, you know, every day we're seeing reports of, you know, I just read one yesterday about a woman who was in the ICU. You know, she ended up, they ended up having to do a C-section in the ICU to save her baby and she died. Um, and these are very real things. So I, I can't impress enough upon people that, that when viral illnesses go bad in pregnancy, it is catastrophic. Your immune system is suppressed in pregnancy so you don't reject the fetus. Otherwise, your immune system would attack the fetus because it's got half foreign DNA. So you are in a suppressed state and there's other things that happen that make pregnancy a unique vulnerable time to um, infections, specifically viral infections. And there are so many, I hear from my colleagues all around the country and other countries about how their ICUs are filled with pregnant people. You need to protect yourself as soon as possible. And the American College of OBGYN, Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, um, you know, the, uh, the, um, the infertility experts, the American Society for, I think it's reproductive medicine, they all say get vaccinated if you're pregnant, if you're not pregnant, the infertility experts are recommending it as part of your infertility workup. If you're thinking about getting IVF, get vaccinated. You know, these experts have no incentive to recommend it if it's unsafe, right? We're not making money from vaccine manufacturers. We have no financial stake. We just don't want people to die. You've expressed frustration um, at the lack of data around these issues and um, not COVID and pregnancy, but around menstrual cycle and the vaccine. Uh, and you said at the beginning of the interview how hard it was to get some sort of response from some of the companies. Why do you think this is so understudied and there's so little information available? 
Well, I think one, it probably just wasn't thought about before. I think that people didn't think about it. I think two, um, to get that accurate data, you have to have people that are willing to track their site, their, their bleeding every single day, right? And it's hard enough to get people to enroll into studies, maybe a little less so with COVID because we're all kind of like panicky, but but you know, getting people to enroll in medical studies is hard. Getting people to do something to record a data set every single day in a study, it's really hard to get people who are willing to do that. Um, many studies have, you know, low completion rates now. So it's, it, and then you're talking that you need to have, you need to have somebody who has a couple of cycles of data coming in because you don't know if a cycle's changed unless you can compare it to what they had before. So, so to do this study correctly isn't as easy as it sounds. Is it impossible? Absolutely not. And we definitely can do hard things in medicine. But, um, but I just think it's important to also counterbalance with the fact that, you know, this, you know, we'd have to be able to enroll people who were willing to cycle track beforehand. And that means waiting to get the vaccine, right? So, so you can produce that data. Um, and so I, 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 that's not an excuse for not doing it, but I think it's a little bit of an explanation about the barriers. And maybe, you know what, that'll motivate people in another study if something comes up like that, that they'll say, you know what, I know that was a problem before and I'm willing to, you know, to record my cycle every single day for science. Is the official stance right now that the vaccine does not impact the menstrual cycle? Well, there, there isn't a stance on it. Um, I mean, I, we, we don't have data, I think, I, but, I, but what I would say is, is that there's absolutely nothing to suggest that, that if it's true, if it's true that the vaccine impacts the menstrual cycle, and we don't know that for sure, if it's true, it's not concerning. It's not medically concerning. And what would you say to women who feel that something's, who know that something's changed in their cycle, think it's connected to the vaccine and are worried right now? Is there anything they can do or what words of comfort would you offer them? I would tell them not to be worried. The lining of your uterus is built for this, right? If you get a cold, that kind of, you know, how many people have had a cold and then their menstrual cycle got off? right? That's happened to me before. I mean, your menstrual, you know, your, the lining of your uterus is built for this. And there is absolutely no data to suggest that this is anything worrisome. All previous vaccine studies would have picked up if there was an, a long-term impact, if there was something catastrophic that happened as a result of this. So I'm not saying that it's not worrying or bothersome. So if it just, again, like a swollen lymph node, right? Like that's more likely to happen after a vaccine and it's going to go away. It's just a sign that your immune system has been activated. I think the thing is most people are just unaware that the lining of your uterus is part of your immune system, right? So this is a really new concept for a lot of people. Me included. It makes sense, but I didn't know that till I read your work. Question, you might not have the answer to this, but I have read that COVID, getting COVID can also cause erectile dysfunction. Now, this isn't your area, but do you know anything about that? Yeah, I only have an amateur interest in the penis. Sorry. <laughs> That's a great line. Okay, what's your final message to anybody who's following this because they feel unheard or unseen and they just want somebody to acknowledge that this is an area worth examining or... Um, well, first of all, I'm really sorry if you've been dismissed. Um, you know, if you have irregular bleeding, it's, you know, it's, it's bothersome and no one wants to be told by their doctor that, you know, or be made to feel like they're making something up or that something isn't true. But irregular bleeding is very common and it can happen out of the blue. And there's many different reasons that it could happen related to a vaccine that's not caused by the vaccine, right? Like I just mentioned that all of the stress related to it could easily have an impact. Stress is a huge trigger, um, but I, you know, it, it's possible it's an effect. It's possible it's not effect, and you know, I think we'll we'll learn more as we start to gather more data, and hopefully this will change other studies in the future. And you know, if a vaccine study comes up and it's one that involves menstrual cycle tracking, um, maybe if you've had this, or maybe because you've heard about these problems, you'd be willing to um, to track your cycle every day for science, um, so we can help inform you know the next generation. But there's absolutely no reason to be concerned. 
um, meaning that a permanent impact on your menstrual cycle, meaning a per like an, any impact on fertility. This is not something to be worried about. We have absolutely no signals to suggest that and no reason to hide it if, if that were the case. You know, there's absolutely no motivation for that. If something were harmful, we'd be telling people that. I mean, look, we're telling people every day about how harmful COVID is, right? So, so I would tell people that it's a possibility. There's, but if, if it is a possibility, I want people to think about it just like a fever or a swollen lymph node after a vaccination. It's a temporary mild side effect that, that will go away. And just like when you get a fever after a vaccine, you're not permanently hot, right? Your immune system resets itself. That's the same thing for the lining of the uterus. Dr. Gunter, thank you for your work and for your time. Thank you, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Jessica Yellen. If you like this video, please click subscribe and you can click the bell to get notifications when we post new content. Thanks for watching.